Hello wonderful people! As we haven't seen each other for such a long time, I wish you a happy new year and have a little tutorial for you. Today it will be all about painting on wood and what I do to prepare the wood for the painting process with watercolor and gouache. It's much simpler when you use oils or acrylics, but hey, let's not go there. First I sort and inspect the wood slices, which I by the way ordered from Amazon and will link it down below as well as the other products used. Feel free to shop in other shops too, to save money. A little disclaimer, none of these were sponsored. Some of the wood slices are a bit rough on the surface or the edges, so I use sanding paper to sand them down a bit and create a smooth surface that is actually nice to touch and look at. This will increase the painting experience and will make it much easier for you. Also, you want a nice end product, right? As Valentine's Day is close, you can think about painting anything Valentine's Day or even Easter related on these and use them for decorating your home or as a unique tag for presents. The ones I gave away for Christmas were used as tree ornaments too. After you have sanded down the surface, it's best to varnish the pieces. When I first painted, painted them last year, I left away the step, but varnishing really adds to the look of the finished piece. I use a matte acrylic varnish, which one is really up to your choice. The pieces are varnished from both sides, but I add only one layer to the side that I want to paint in the next step, while I add up to three layers to the back side. For me, both sides need to be nice and smooth in the end, and the piece needs to be durable. As much as watercolor and gouache can create a durable piece. Now comes the next step that you can't leave out. The layer I actually paint on is the watercolor ground. The one I use is the transparent one by Daniel Smith, again linked below. There are other brands that offer watercolor ground too, but I happen to own this one and that's what I use. The transparent one gives a nice transparent layer that won't allow water to be sucked in quickly into the wood and gives a nice paintable surface. It's a little different from paper though. I use a brush for this that, that I only use for the watercolor ground because it tends to gum up the brushes. By the way, besides the painting process itself, I use cheap brushes because the varnish and watercolor ground tends to destroy them if not cleaned properly after use. Let all your precious prepared pieces dry well. I did let them dry overnight. Now you can start the painting process using watercolor gouache. In this video, I paint the frog using Nevska Palitra Masterclass gouache. While watercolor is transparent and lets the background and, th and tree rings show through, gouache is opaque and just looks different. Watercolor is what I used a lot in the past for these pieces and I love it. Gouache is something I tried just last month and fell in love with the effect of an opaque realistic painting with wood rings in the background. As you probably know by now, I'm still in a major frog phase, with some birds being painted now and then. This is one of the frogs that I just had to paint. My, my attempt is to paint as realistic as is possible for me, while still creating an artistic expression and keep the feeling of wood and a frog that seems like it's about to jump from the slice and come to life. I'm not sure if I'm successful, but there's still time to practice, right? So while painting, you need to know that water spreads a lot over the watercolor ground. This means that you have to control your water flow well. I'm not always successful at that, but I'm aware of the issue. When painting in layers, let your layers dry properly and be careful when painting areas that are close to each other. Gouache does not layer as well as watercolor, but can easily be adjusted. As a note, I don't use acrylic gouache. That one would layer well. Mm -hmm. 
As for the brushes, I tend to go small, which is very unusual to me, and also use brushes which are synthetic with more snap than the ones I, I would use for paper. Da Vinci Nova turned out to be the perfect for these wood projects, no matter if I use them with watercolor or gouache. You can look for something similar in your stash. In general, don't feel the need to use the exact, exact same products as I do. This tutorial will work with other kinds of varnish, watercolor ground, paint and brushes too. The most crucial is probably to have a watercolor ground that creates a nice paintable surface, but it doesn't matter which brand it comes from. Also, if you like to experiment, there are grounds in white, black, gold, glitter, so you can choose one that is perfect for your art style. So far, this is what I've learned from weeks and months of painting on wood and explore and improve the process as well as the results. In the next part of the tutorial, I will talk and show you how I finished these pieces to make them waterproof and hopefully UV resistant, UV resistant for a long time. How light fast the pieces actually are will be tested in the summer and also how the different supplies react. This will be another part of adding information to the watercolor database my partner and I have started a few years ago. There you can already look up the paints you have and check for their, their actual light fastness, so you know what you're using. I believe especially wood slices that can be hung up everywhere, even outside, may be exposed to sunlight more than other art. Curious Me will test all of this and of course publish the results. Knowledge is power and I want you all to have the best info before you invest in supplies. So if you're curious about how to finish up your wood slices, you might want to subscribe to not miss the next tutorial. As always, all questions are welcome. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Stay safe and stay creative. Bye!